Good morning, students. It's Mrs. Staymeyer, and I am here today to introduce a new project to you for distance learning. Um, we call this project the Word Pinwheel, and um, it is actually an abstract artwork that is composed of letters and words. So this one, as you can see, um, it's quite lovely. It's done, this one's done in paint. I'm working on a sample for you in colored pencil for those of you who may not have paint at home. Um, when we talk about our word pinwheel, a pinwheel, you know, is one of those um, little things that you have in your garden and it spins around with the wind. And um, appropriately, this word pinwheel spells the word flowers, F-L-O-W-E-R-S. And what we do with this word pinwheel is um, we're going to take our, our word and we're going to write it right side up, as well as what we would call mirror image which is upside down, reflected like in a mirror or the reflection of a lake. And uh, we're going to write it and then trace it around the circle in the four diff different quadrants of our paper. One, two, three, four. And when we put it all together, um, then we get this nice concentric circle abstract looking design. So without further delay, I'm going to show you how to get this project started. Um, I have a couple other samples, though, that I can also show you. This one is supposed to be on um, turned on to the diagonal. And this one is from a student whose name is Carlos. And it says, show you one more time here. by covering our letters. You can see C-A-R-L-O, the green O, and the turquoise S here. And Carlos is one of my students from Guatemala, and so his is a Guatemalan flag-inspired work. And then this one, um, my student Sarah, as hers right there you can see the name Sarah appears okay so now you understand that you should write a name or a word of course appropriate for school and how do we get this going so if you're working in colored pencil you can use two regular sheets of eight and a half by 11 inch computer printer paper and um, you'll need two sheets because one of them we will be using to write our word and make the paper on which we're going to um, write it and then use it to trace it in the four quadrants. And then the other sheet will be your final draft. So um, to get started on your small piece where you're going to write your word, um, presumably if you're using your eight and a half by 11 inch computer paper. Get up here in the camera space. Right there, eight and a half by 11 inch. Then you're going to use one section of this and half of eight and a half is four and a quarter. So I need to make sure that I cut a very precise four and one quarter inch square. So to make sure things are always straight, we always measure in two places before connecting them. And then I'm going to measure over four and a quarter in two places. And draw it down. Now when I cut this out, I'm gonna be very, very um, careful so that I don't alter um, my square. And when you cut it out, obviously you're going to get this. 
nice four and quarter inch square. After you have your square, and you may want to cut several of them out of your single sheet of paper so that you can have some practice runs at it uh, or try out some different lettering styles because working with lettering can be a challenge and different styles of lettering like you see in the samples here are going to produce different results and that can be very interesting to play around with. So after you've got your square, you're just going to take your uh, square and fold it once diagonally. And all of these instructions will be in your Google Classroom document as well. Uh, and you're going to fold it once diagonally. And then this section here is where we are going to write our word. There's some important things about writing your word um, that I want you to follow. In writing your word, it's important that you start with the fold towards you and your opening your points facing away from you and that you make sure that your word has openings to the fold as well as the top right side of your triangle and what i mean is that by that is that you're not going to have any gaps or markings um, that close off the letters in that area so um, I'm just going to pick a word here as an example. Uh, I prefer that your word be somewhere in the neighborhood of four to six letters. So I'm going to just write the word paint for you here. And I'll pick just a bubble letter style. I'll try to do it right the first time so that you don't have to erase, but it's likely that you will make some errors and need to erase. So there's my bubble letter P, and you see that I have the top edge of my P on the edge of the paper there. Here, zoomed in a little bit oh, over here. And then I left it so that the bottom of my P just runs right off of the fold. For my A then, let me just sketch what my A might look like. It's a little bit crooked. Let me go a more this direction. All right. So I will try to maintain approximately the same thickness of my letters going all the way through. Could use a ruler on this if you really want it to be perfect. Um, for my eye, I'm just going to do a stick eye. And I will go ahead and run it all the way off the next side. that take a ruler and draw that in and then my n absolutely needs to run off the top edge so see how here i have the top of my i and the top of my n are open to those edges the same way that my letters are open to the bottom fold. And I'm going to have a little fun with my T and I'll just go sideways all the way into the corner there, something like that. All right. And I think my letters are a pretty good shape and size there. As I said, it may take you a couple of attempts in order to get your letters just how you prefer them. And then after I have it how I know I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and make it dark because I'm going to need to see this um, 
traced through uh, a separate piece of paper. All right, so once you have your word written out or your name, it does not have to be a name, it can be a word, you are going to take your folded piece of paper to a window or perhaps if you happen to have it, a light table. This is a very small portable light table, so it's reflecting light back at you. I'll turn it off so you can see what it looks like. It's just a small light board. Um, most people don't have these. I don't have one at home either. <clears throat> when I'm doing artwork at home, I just use a window. And um, a window is the original light table during the day. And so you'll just take this to the window and you will trace it through to the other side so that what you end up with is your word right side up, how you wrote it originally. And then also it will be upside down. I'm gonna pause the video and come back with that done for you. All right, so I used my light table or window to trace my word paint to the other side so that now what I have is my word regular and what we call mirror image. All right, so our next step then, set this aside for a little bit and get that second piece of paper because we need to cut this into a square as well. And of course we can only make the largest square as deep as the shortest side. So my paper is measuring at eight and a half inches. So I'll turn and put my ruler along the long side of the paper, mark it at eight and a half, always measuring and marking in two opposing places so that when you draw your line, you know that it is really straight. and I'll connect them. And then use my scissors to cut this excess scrap off and throw that away. All right, so after you cut it out, now you have our regular eight and a half by eight and a half inch square. I am going to find the middle of my square by making an X. Light-handed means not pressing hard and dark, and I know it will make it a little more difficult for you to see there on the video camera. I'm gonna turn, see if I can adjust. Maybe a little easier for you to see. Light-handed, and on a rectangle or a square, anytime you make an X corner to corner, then it shows you where the center point is. So our next step is going to be tracing. And I think it took me around 15 minutes um, to trace my example that I have for you here in a minute. Uh, so it's not a long time and it's definitely worth the effort. Uh, I'm gonna take a little piece of tape and you see how we have this fold down the middle of our small square, that fold is going to line up with the X that goes through the middle. And the last letter that I drew, my T in this example, is going to go in the center of the paper. So as I flip upside down my word square, I'm careful to line up the outside corner of my squares, and also the inside where the X meets with the last letter in my word. If it helps you to not forget, you may want to put a little dot or something on um, the inside corner of that square so that as you rotate it, you make sure that the middle always gets the dot. 
So I'm gonna take this to the light table or the window again, and I'm going to be tracing this square four times. I'm gonna flip it over and I'll be tracing through to write the word paint right side up and mirror image upside down into this quadrant. And then I will peel off my tape and I will rotate it like a pinwheel so that that center point always stays in the center. I'll again line up my outside corners and my dots for the middle, keeping that T on the inside. I'll take it to the light table, trace the second quadrant, rotate for a third time, so that quadrant number three gets the same thing and trace to the other side. I know it's a lot of tracing it seems like, but it's the only way to get this effect um, on paper. Of course, digital programs have other means of flipping and rotating, copying, flipping, rotating um, your artwork so that you can create something like this. But if you are going to be making a painting, remember our goal here, uh, the only way to accomplish this is to trace it onto your paper uh, into the four quadrants. All right, so um, I have already started and traced an example. It's a slightly different example, so I want to show you how different letters, styles, uh, will create a differing effect. Um, this one is more in the same style here with just block letters that each letter is separate from the other. The P is not connected to the A. The A is not touching the I, uh, the N or the T. Those are not touching each other. Um, but one cool way that you can do it is you could choose to use a more cursive style of writing and you can connect all of your letters so here you see this one says the name Millie, um, and it's the M-I-L-L-I-E, and you see that they are all connected to one another. So the way this will get colored is that the colors will fade between uh, each letter. You see though that on this example, I do have the bottoms of my letters open uh, to the fold, and then the tops of my letters on the top right hand side are open as well. My M is a little bit open and that's fine. Uh, those are only going to go straight to the border though of your paper. So the top left edge does not have to be open. When I trace this one to the other side to create the mirror image, you end up with this design which is quite pretty and has lots of loops and um, fun little things. You get this little heart right here in the shape that the E is making. And then I have already taken the time to take it to the light table and I've traced it into all four quadrants of the paper. Get this to zoom just a tad. And you can see that it creates this very doily looking or lacy kind of looking um, effect. And once you have it traced, so you see I had traced it here from the back, of course, and then here, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four all by using the same X as described the previous paint example, tracing it around, then I'm ready to go in with my colored pencil. And I'm excited about doing this in colored pencil. Um, I haven't decided yet what I will do with the background, 
you'll get to see the final project and I'm sure I'll take a few pictures along the way to post for you. Um, I always advise for my paint students to do the background in black and then bright colors for the letters in your word as they create their circles. I just think that the black is nice contrast against the bright colored paints. Um, but you can do yours as you wish this time around. And one important thing that I want to say before you start coloring though in this process is as you can see on all of the examples, each letter is the same color. So all of the Fs are done in the same shade of turquoise blue. All of the Ls are the same. All of the Os are the same design. The H's are the lighter blue. Um, a little bit of violet has been added or magenta has been added to our turquoise for the E's. All of your R's are the same and your S's are the same. Then um, this student went ahead and put a little, just a little fun flower design in the middle for, um, for effect. Uh, so you see here that all of the letters create a circle. Please don't change them. You wouldn't want to have these S is one and these S is another or break up these A's. Otherwise you'll ruin the concentric circle effect that we're really going for in this project. Concentric circles, remember, means one circle right inside of the other, creating a target-like design. So I hope that explained the project well to you in terms of your process for getting started. I'll be posting pictures of my final colored pencil design for the word Millie that I just showed you. And I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. All right, good luck. Don't hesitate to ask questions.